What is going on peasants? My name is JB and you know I had to unapologetically make this video really early but I've been having just too much fun playing Glaceon and I again I unapologetically really like views so you know what we're doing here you guys can read titles you guys can read thumbnails we are going to be tier ranking the newly released Glaceon and less so a more broader in a more broad sense the uh entire solo queue meta for season five we obviously don't know a ton about it but it should be a pretty good time and uh i've been playing a lot these last few days like more than i usually have I already have close to 30 games on glaceon over a 50 percent win rate so i think i know you know a good enough amount to actually make this video early i always do this but i've played glaceon more than other releases because i've been having so much fun with it so it feels like you know i'm actually somewhat well qualified to make this video for once so let's go ahead and hop on into it and if you're new here what i usually use the d tier for is less so the worst pokemon in the game and more so pokemon i think could be most in need of a little bit of help so don't necessarily look at the d tier and what i put in it and think oh man he thinks my best pokemon or my favorite pokemon's bad no it's just like i think this pokemon probably could use just a little bit of help more than some of the other pokemon in the game so that's what we use the d tier for here and one more thing before we get started please be sure to like and subscribe leave a comment all that sort of fun stuff if you enjoy the content i would really love to hit 500 subscribers before scarlet violet i don't know if that's going to be possible but maybe we can make it happen if you help me out a little bit so like subscribe do all the sort of youtuber stuff and let's go ahead and get into it let's go ahead and start off with speedsters because man uh do we have some fun things to talk about first and foremost let's just go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room that is absol i'm gonna put it in a tier for now because i think it's still really really good but the problem is they did nerf it and the nerfs do feel significant but they in attempting to fix the night slash bug they bugged the night slash even worse so they did lower the damage significantly and you don't quite rip people apart as much as you did with your psycho cut combos which is a really 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 good thing by the way um, so it's still a good Pokemon though, but we won't really know until they actually fix Night Slash. So if you don't know the original bug with Night Slash, you know how when you use it for the first time, it has that little crescent shape like you do with Faint. The max range of that often wouldn't hit and would do no damage. So they tried to fix that. And also just imagine if Night Slash had worked properly when, you know, in the previous patch when Absol was completely broken. Just imagine if it had worked then, how much uh, better it would be. So um thankfully it wasn't at its full peak po possible power at the time but they mess it up and now the second slash sometimes just doesn't do damage so yeah it's it's rough but i think the pokemon's still good i think it's still gonna be very viable i just don't think it's gonna be completely game ruining and like i said in my previous videos i've never once considered quitting this game i almost quit playing this game for a little bit until this absolute nerf came because it was that oppressive to me but they finally went ahead and fixed it and uh yeah it should be in a better place now it's still gonna be quite the demon but i don't think it's gonna be quite as good now moving on let's go ahead and talk about talonflame next i think talonflame is pretty solid i'm gonna put it in b tier that's just because i think the character itself is still really easy to play and really strong the problem is uh, a lot of talonflame players are terrible like disproportionately to every other character I encounter in the game, like you'll run into your, you know, your Greninja and your Cinderace one tricks who just do nothing but get a couple kills here and there. Talonflame players are kind of the same vibe where they don't help your team, but they also just do nothing, especially the Talonflame players who just go for scores. So it's just disproportionately, I run into a lot of bad Talonflame players personally, but the character itself is still really strong. I just don't think it's on the same level as the other speedsters. I'm borderline putting it in C tier. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I am going to put it in C tier because I think there are just a lot of other better, um, you know, divey characters and, you know, just sort of burst damage characters, including pretty much every other speedster right now. So, I, I Talonflame, it's good. I just think, you know, it, it's kind of, it's less so Talonflame's fault, more so Power Creep and more so my personal biases, I'll admit. But, uh, yeah, I think Talonflame is a very good Pokemon. It's just, you know, it, it's nothing, nothing crazy. And before we get any further into this, you can win and have fun and do well with any of these Pokemon in the game. Don't take this as like gospel or anything i'm just some idiot who plays this game way too much all right moving on gengar i have been a notorious gengar hater and i think gengar is a um one of the dumbest pokemon in the game <laughs> but uh it is very 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 good uh similar to talonflame where I, you know like i said i've ran into disproportionate amount of bad talonflame players i've also ran into a disproportionate amount of bad gengar players personally 
uh when they're on my team though when i play an enemy gengar i rarely get thrashed as hard as i do by any other pokemon in the game but yeah gengar it's burst damage is sometimes just unfair dream eater is really strong if you can land it the problem with gengar is you have to land your attacks uh to be able to survive and thrive but it's still very good so if, if you're able to get out and not feed your brains out it's a very good pokemon but the problem is oftentimes you can't do that and if you're playing on my team you definitely don't do that and i need to add one more tier to this so let's go ahead and do that we usually i, I i've been doing this lately that's just that's just the hoop of tier so we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit i, f I forgot to do it but uh, yeah, let's move on to the last speedster, and that is going to be Zero Aura. I am putting Zero Aura firmly in A tier. It might even be S tier. Um, I just, I don't know if I want to overrate it. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. This charge, Zero Aura, is one of my absolute favorite builds in the game, and they buffed it. I am so happy that they buffed this charge. Like, they, it was originally amazing, then they reined it in a little bit, and now they brought it back up. So, oh my gosh. This charge is so fun, and I am very glad that we're moving in a good direction with Zero Aura. It lowered its Unite move from level 10 to level 9 in this previous patch, which is a good thing. This is something we've been all wanting for a really long time. What I'm so, so, so glad they didn't do, however, is lower its level up moves to 5 and 7. Because imagine Zero Aura getting Discharge at level 7, or getting Wild Charge at level 7 with the power spike it has. It would be... It would be Hoopa tier. But, uh, yeah, it's... Zero Aura is incredible. It's... I, I love it. I love Discharge so much. I do still think that Wild Charge does need a nerf because I think it's one of the most broken moves in the game that this character can just completely avoid all damage for like three seconds and not care about anything. But that's a different, uh, that's a different, you know, conversation. If you want to hear more in-depth thoughts on that, I have like a balanced patch video. I have a how I would balance every Pokemon in the game video that I released a month or two ago. If you want to go check that out and hear me talk in-depth about every Pokemon in the game at the time. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 long story short, I think Wild Charge is broken. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and move on to supports. So, supporters, uh, Blissey got a pretty big nerf. So let's go ahead and start off with Blissey. Uh, last couple patches, it's been easily S tier. But nowadays, I'm going to move it down to A. I didn't really play Blissey too much last night, but I played a lot with a Blissey this season. And its healing is as good as it's always been. The problem is Egg Bomb just doesn't feel as useful. And Safeguard, you know what? Man, it's... I, I have to keep Blissey and Esther. I have to keep Blissey and Esther. Safeguard is still useful. It's still solid. It's just whatever. It doesn't matter. Its healing is still good. Its healing got better, arguably, because it's maybe the better build now and people will realize how much you can heal this Pokemon. It is unbelievably easy to do 100,000 healing in one game. Like, it's super easy to do. It's very consistent. I had, you know, games last night at five stack, a uh, bunch of my friends, and every single game our Blissey had 130k plus healing. Every single game for like a 10 game stretch and we won nine of them so yeah it's Bl blissey is an unbelievable healer it has an unbelievable unite move helping hand is still good egg bomb well not as good as it was still decent you know little stun it's not bad i think blissey man it's either it's the very very top of a or it's still s in my opinion i think it might be the bottom of s just because it's such a good healer it is so effing good like as just a pure healer now, let's go ahead and move on to our friend Eldegoss. I'm going to put Eldegoss firmly in B tier. Damage Eldegoss is very real. Damage build Eldegoss is a very, very real threat. I just think there are better um, lane mages, but it is very real. Like Leaf Tornado, Cotton Spore, I think is the damage one. Whichever one is the damage one. It is a very real damage build, and it's a decent, not great healer. Like, it's always been solid. It's not bad. It's just Blissey does everything Eldegoss does better blissey gives like better shields blissey gives better healing blissey has a better unite move but El nothing eldegoss does is bad it's just everything blissey does is basically the same thing but better so eldegoss is fine it's just it's just not blissey that's the main knock against eldegoss all right next up we have wigglytuff i'm also gonna put wigglytuff in b tier the problem with wigglytuff if it is it's always been less of a support and more of a defender so much so that whoever made this tier list originally just has it listed as a defender I, I, maybe it was a defender in the beta or something, but I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't make this template. I just use it because I think these backgrounds are just a little bit better than the PNGs. And also, I don't want to make my own PNG when I can't find a PNG when that's updated on release day. Uh, yeah, uh, the problem with uh, uh, Wigglytuff is it's always just been more of a defender than a supporter. It doesn't really provide great team support. Seeing its phenomenal crowd control always has been. Q-Charm is one of the most broken abilities in the game still. 
it's again the main problem with wigglytuff is it's not blissey wigglytuff doesn't provide shields in the same way as blissey blissey provides you know more help that way uh same with hoopa like it's just not the other supports and you would just rather have as a defender you just rather have a mammal swine if you're running a pure defender or a slow bro um so that's the main problem with really tough is just other pokemon do its job better but it's still really solid rollouts fun sing is still really good has a good not great unite move and it does a decent amount of damage like it's a fine character it's just other pokemon perform its job better now let's go ahead and talk about mr mime and once again let me reiterate this is not because i think mr mime is bad i think mr mime is unbelievably fun i think mr mime is great but i also think mr mime is very close to being up here with one small tweak i'm putting mr mime in the d tier and again we use the d tier for the pokemon that i think are most in need of a buff and i think mr mime is one small tweak from being one of the best support slash defenders in the game give it guard swap plus at level 11 and mr mime will be broken guard swap plus is one of the best attacks in the game the healing tether that you get to your team is so unbelievably good it's one of the best healing moves in the game it could compete with blissey if it got that move earlier i truly believe that that's the only problem with Mr. Mime. Confusion is one of, if not the best stunts in the game. Confusion is so, so good, and it's so strong. It's such a great stacker. It's such a great defender, supporter. It would be such a good Pokemon if it just got Guard Swap Plus at level 11. That's all it needs to be one of the best Pokemon in the game. I truly, truly believe that. But as for now, if I'm actually ranking it in terms of viability, I think it's like a solid B tier. I just, I really, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do this needs uh buff not bad <laughs> there we go all right <laughs> we're just gonna do that so yeah I, I don't think it's bad i just think it needs a slight tweak and it will be amazing all right next up we have hoopa it goes in the hoopa tier it's not that hoopa is a broken character in terms of damage dealing or in terms of you know carry potential or whatever it's just that hoopa hole is so unbelievably game changing uh, I'm playing Hoopa for a tournament that is going to be uh, going on tomorrow as you guys are watching this So come hang out on my Twitch chat. I'm gonna be Twitch stream gonna be playing with some really cool people scolded Colin Tang from Brave Birders RT saw uh, Don't poke your eye out and McNuff are my teammates So it's gonna be a really fun time We're gonna be playing in a tournament and there's gonna be a bunch of other streamers playing the same tournament I'm playing Hoopa for my team. I've been playing a lot of Hoopa. It's just uh, a little bit of a tangent it's just that hoopa what it provides is just it's so unlike every other character in the game i just think it belongs in a tier of its own it's just the holes are just game changing especially in i say at most a trio queue i think hoopa's pretty rough in solo queue specifically but if you're playing in a duo or a trio hoopa all or and hyperspace hole are just so unbelievably game changing there are really cool interactions you can have with um phantom force as well Shadow Ball is still decent. Trick is still fun if you're just, you know, you and you you and just a buddy are doing in a lane with like, I don't know, something like a Decidueye or a Garchomp. You can still have some fun with that. Yeah, Hoopa is just, it's not the most broken character in the game, but it's the most game changing character in the game. So it goes in its own tier. Let's go ahead and talk about all arounders next. This is probably the area of the game that I'm most familiar with is I play mostly all arounders when I'm on stream and just playing with my teammates because that's usually what the team needs. And I think they're some of the best characters in the game. and very very strong so let's go ahead and just talk about garchomp garchomp is one of my favorite characters to play and by the way i am very excited for these two oh my god um <laughs> uh, yeah garchomp uh it's it's good it's just it has walk away from you syndrome like the main problem with garchomp is people can just walk away from it and completely ignore it and it's kind of just useless at that point but if you get caught by a garchomp if you try to face check a garchomp very few characters excel in one-on-one -on -one duels better like it is incredibly strong in fights it is incredibly strong in 1v1 scenarios it is a great objective ripper it doesn't have great objective secure dragon build has a ton of displacement it's a really fun character if you know how to do it and you know your limits on it you can really really carry with this pokemon it's just otherwise it's kind of bad and yeah i think it's i think it's about a middle of the pack pokemon honestly speaking but i can see how some people think Garchomp is really bad uh, but i truly don't think so i think it's a very solid pokemon you just have to know what you're doing and unfortunately very few people will know what they're doing all right Moving on to Lucario, we don't need to talk about it. It's been broken since day one, still broken. Moving on. Charizard, gonna put it in A tier. It's more of a jungler than anything else, as whereas a lot of the other all arounders, except maybe Aegislash, are. Um, Aegislash and Dragonite are. Okay, let's start this over. Charizard and Dragonite are mainly junglers, whereas Aegislash can be a jungler, but the rest of them are mostly laners. You can obviously play them anywhere. But Charizard is pretty much a pure jungler. I think it's really, really terrible in lane. And as a jungler, it's very strong, has one of the best Unite moves in the game. 
Um, Flare Blitz is fun if you want to go that route, but otherwise Fire Spin, Fire Blast, very, very strong, giving you movement speed and slowing opponents. And again, one of the best Unite moves in the game. The problem is it's a level nine evolution and it's a little bit rough getting that before Dreadnought sometimes. So you have to be a little bit careful with it, but otherwise I think it's a really, really strong jungler. It's just, there are better junglers at the end of the day and it's good. It's great, it's just not one of the best characters in the game. Speaking of one of the best characters in the game, I think this Pokemon has finally earned S tier distinction, and that's Machamp, and that's less so because it's caught up to Lucaria, more so because everything else is just falling down and falling into place where just Machamp in any solo top laner is just on another level right now. I think it's gonna eventually lead to some sort of attack weight nerf, but I don't think attack weight is what needs to be nerfed. I'm gonna pull up Unite DB quickly on my other monitor just so you guys can see what i'm talking about so i'll bring in lucario and we'll bring in machamp and we'll bring in serena so people are talking about nerfing attack weight and i guess we can go ahead and pull this up real quick as well so attack weight it scales your attack um you know every time you score so you get you know, a plus 12 to every your attack every time you stack up to six stacks so it's really strong and people are thinking, you know, maybe rein that in a little bit, but I don't think attack weight is what needs to be reined in. I think what needs to be reined in is the percentages that these Pokemon get. Like, why is Lucario getting 200% of his attack on every single extreme speed it clicks? Or 200% on his power up punch? Or 400% on a fully charged power up punch? Like, these are what need to be nerfed on all arounders and pretty much every Pokemon in general. Just rein crap like this in because it's, it's absurd how strong this is like why is it getting that much of a boost why is this getting that much of a boost just if you tap the button like this is what needs to be reined in Mach machamps aren't as bad but this is still really strong this is like just pretty good dynamic punch doesn't have great scaling but it still is very strong submission has good scaling unite move has unbelievable scaling so yeah this is what i feel like needs to be reined in on all arounders to bring them back in a little bit and then serena is one of the most egregious ones like for fuck's sake like Triple Axe was not even good and it's still really strong. So yeah, I think less so that um, all uh, attack weight needs to be there for these all-arounders to be reined in a little bit. I think more so just lower in the scaling. So let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. I also think Serena is Esther for this very reason. I think Serena is honestly, we're gonna just move Blissey down a little bit because I said it was at the bottom of Esther. Actually, nah, we'll, we'll leave it there just because of the healing. I think Serena right now is the closest a Pokemon has ever been to Lucario in terms of being able to catch up to it. Serena is so effing good let me tell you if you're struggling ranking up just play serena play stomp serena learn how to um reset your cleanly majesty chris hero just made an amazing video uh, detailing that really well but it, it has so much sustain so much mobility a really strong unite move you just 1v1 and delete every single squishy every single attacker in the game serena just deletes from the game it is obscenely strong and i think it's borderline I think it's more broken than Lucario in a solo queue setting. Just because Lucario can be a little bit hard to play in some instances there. I think Machamp also might be better than Lucario in solo queue, but it just in team play, Lucario is better, obviously, in coordinated play. But um, Serena, honestly, might even be close to Lucario in coordinated play. It's just Serena is it's disgustingly good right now. And moving on to the best jungler in the game, in my opinion, um, Dragonite. I think Dragonite is incredible right now has the best secure in the game with hyper beam hyper beam is very very much back uh so yeah gotta be a little bit you know wary of anytime you see a dragon around. like last night we had a 1v4 fight on dreadnought or on Zapdos, and a one hp dragonite walks past my team because well one of my teammates my buddy gala that was you know attacking the dragonite everyone else on my team just ripping the Zapdos, and the you know guy that was playing like i don't know defender i think he's playing mammal swine could have like killed the dragonite and the dragonite just gets a hyper beam off against four people and steals it because it's that good of a secure move and yeah it's just it's 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 the best jungler in the game right now hyper beam is the best secure in the game and for the love of god people outrage is bad I'm not going to apologize for it. I know some people have made videos about Outrage recently, talking about how it's, you know, a less good build and how, you know, and then they've been bombarded in comments by this, this sea of Outrage Dragonite players saying, oh, no, it's good. It's good. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. It's bad. It is very, very bad. It is not good. Like, but it, it's a worse Serena. It's a worse Machamp. It's a worse Lucario. It's a worse Aegislash. It is a worse Brawler. It's honestly a worse Garchomp. It is a bad build. Come at me. I don't care. It's a worse Azumarill. 
it's not good all right moving on to age slash i think age slash is borderline a tier i'll put it in a tier just because it has that versatility of playing in lane or in um jungle where it can be really solid and if you learn the combos with um sacred sword and um whatever it's called wide guard i always call it king shield because for some reason they gave the king shield po they didn't give the king shield pokemon king shield uh <clears throat> but if you learn how to stack that it's really really strong shadow claw is okay it crits a lot and has good displacement but i don't think shadow claw is great but i think wide guard sacred sword has some of the highest skill ceiling in the game if you know how to play that build then you're going to carry games and for that reason i'll go ahead and put it in a tier azumarill i'm gonna put it in b ahead of garchomp uh you know what i'll be i'll be realistic i'll move garchomp down because uh, azumarill is good like they've buffed it a lot in previous patches i just still think it's you know the gimmick of not being able to do maximum damage when there are multiple people around is bad like if you're able to assassinate people you have to play azumarill kind of like gengar or kind of like absol you have to play azumarill like an assassin to get the most value out of it i just you know i would rather play gengar or absol if i'm going for that sort of gameplay but it's okay um in fights like it's a little bit better i think whirlpool water um water pulse is good in a team fight the buffs to aqua tail and play rough are nice like play rough is already fine you use it more so as a mobility tool than any anything kind of like a free uh x speed i still think aqua Tail's bad i still think aqua Tail's really bad it does negative damage in scenarios where there are more than one enemy and doesn't even do that much damage in one-on-one -on -one fights i just i'd much rather have whirlpool 100 times out of 100 it's okay the healing's fine it's just you do no damage on that build personally i i maybe someone else can do maybe you guys are able to carry with that build i can't figure it out but yeah let's go ahead. that's what i have on azumarill let's move on to our defender friend snorlax snorlax buddy i think they need to help you out a little bit the uh the cooldown reduction it got on heavy slam and uh block was cool but again, there's just so much mobility in this game, so much unstoppable in this game that it doesn't really matter. And if you watch, you know, me stream in the last couple days, I have done nothing but complain about how broken block is. I do think block is a really, 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 really strong move. It's just I was playing Glaceon all the time and Glaceon has no way of getting around it. <laughs> so that's probably why I was complaining uh, about block so much. But it's it's really good. It's just that's the only good thing about Snorlax's kit. Lail is a meme. Um, it has the worst unite move in the game aside from Mammal Swine, but Mammal Swine, the rest of this kit is exponentially better. I just think Snorlax, it needs a little something. I don't know what that is. Um, Yawn's good, Block's good, its damage moves are bad. Like Heavy Slam's okay at best, its unite moves bad. And there's just so much mobility in this game that you can't even really um, properly get good value out of Block a lot of the time. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in the needs a little bit of help tier. I'm going to try to speed these up a little bit because I realize I'm 22 minutes into this, but we're talking and we're having fun. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Crustle next. I think Crustle is a solid C tier. Maybe closer to low B. I'm going to put it in C. Uh, and I should note that these aren't really in order. Like I'm not. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this late in the video, you guys will figure it out. Um, yeah, Crustle is strong. I just think like as a def it's more of like a an all-arounder slash speedster slash nuisance than really a defender like x is really really good shell smash is really really good it has a great kit it's just like a niche pick that's more of like a for fun pick it's horrible in coordinated play but if you're just messing around like you can really have a lot of fun you can really carry a game with cross i think it's really solid i just don't think it's you know anything special i'll bump it up to b tier just to be nice i think i think you can do a lot of fun stuff with cross i just don't think it's the best in terms of an, like an actual defender all right blastoise i'm still i'm leaving it in a tier i think it's phenomenal um surf hydro pump provides great crowd control water spot rapid spin still does good damage it's unite move doesn't delete people anymore but it does do amazing um crowd control like it's a crowd control demon it's a damage demon like it's still a really 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 good defender it's the most attacker like defender i i feel so personally but yeah it's it's always good it's great it's it's fun it's fantastic it's yeah it, it's it's in a healthy good spot right now just don't touch the blast for a while and i think we'll be fine Mammoth swine i think is the definition of a b tier pokemon one of the more balanced pokemon in the game still has an unbelievably bad unite move the worst unite move in the game but it does have fantastic crowd control fantastic team fight fantastic um just bullying it's it's really good at just being a bully really good at just getting in mixing it up ruining your team uh ruining your opponents like backline your coordination their coordination and stuff like that like i swing super fun a lot of freezes really good pokemon it's just kind of 
mid at everything else. Okay. Here's might be my hottest take. I think Slowbro is S tier. I think Slowbro is unbelievably good right now because of one reason and one reason only Scald. Scald is one of the best attacks in the game. Um, like just run double band specs and carry games. Like you can truly carry on Scald, bro. It's so fun. You don't die with Amnesia plus Potion. Like this character doesn't die and it does really respectable damage. That's a really strong early game as it falls off a little bit mid game. But if you land a big ult, like as one of the best Unite moves in the game too, like if you can catch like a Machamp running in with its ult, you can catch a Charizard out of the air. You can you know grab a Serena before it gets crazy. Same thing with like an Absol. Like you can really carry a fight with Sober. You can really carry a game with Sober. I think it's phenomenal. One of the best Pokemon in the game. Now moving on to Greedent, I'm putting it A tier. Scales really well, stacks really well. Still unbelievably difficult to kill. I hate playing it more than any other character in the game, but it's you know I have to give it its just due. It's it's really good. I hate it though. I hate it with a passion. And speaking of Pokemon that I hate, but I love to play, I'm also going to put Trevenant in the old A tier because, man, does this character not die and is that so fun to play against? It's very frustrating when you play against a good tree, but uh, I do really enjoy playing tree myself. It's like, it's so fun. Like, I truly think Pain Split might actually be okay. Maybe not. But Curse Horn Leech is one of the best builds in the game, one of the best sustained Pokemon in the game. It's so good. I love it to death. I love, 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 love my tree. All right. Let's go ahead and get to our attackers Why you are all here. Venusaur, I'm going to put it in A tier. It's borderline S for me, but I think there are a couple things holding it back, and that's mainly just that there are other Pokemon that are better. Uh looking at it a second time i actually can't think of too many special or just attackers in general better than Venusaur. there's only a couple that i'd even put on par with it so yeah i'm actually gonna bump it up to s -tier. i think it's one of the best attackers in the game always has been giga drain pedal dance a phenomenal build solar beam great for you know just burst damage and stealing things and just think situ by spare track was slightly better at that but uh yeah the Venusaur is phenomenal love it to death all right it's going in the s tier guard of war i'm putting an a tier uh it evolves a little earlier than it did previously Evolving at level eight is really cool. Very strong, um, you know, all throughout the game now, making his early game a little bit better. Um, Moonblast is the most overpowered stun in the game. We talked about Mr. Mom Confusion a little bit being that. It's actually Gardevoir Moonblast. It is the most broken stun in the game. One of the most broken moves in the game. Gardevoir is a great jungler. It's a little bit better in lane than it has been. It's just, you know, there are other Pokemon that are, you know, a little bit better maybe. I think, I think it's perfectly fine in A tier. Greninja. I'm... Mm, this one's hard for me. I want to put it S, but I think I'm going to leave it A. I'm going to leave it A mainly because it there are better junglers, namely Dragonite, that's just a little bit better. Um, Surf is still a really good build. It's still really good. You can still, it's still one of the best hyper carry solo queue Pokemon in the game. I just don't think it's quite on par with some of the other junglers. Nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. It has to be. It has to be. I was just looking at the other attackers. I think I only have one other S tier attacker. Uh, and yeah, I think Greninja is just too good as a, like a, a, a hyper carry. If you know what you're doing on Greninja, you can just snowball a game. You can just win a game with ease just by yourself. Like it's that kind of character. And I think another character like that is Cinderace. I've been talking about Cinderace for so long, being completely overpowered. Uh, but the problem is, um, other characters just sort of took over the competitive meta. This is more, the game be game became more secure focused. But Cinderace, I'm telling you, is going to start creeping back up. Uh, maybe not to like the prominence that it once has, where it was considered like widely to be one of the best Pokemon in the game. I still truly think Cinderace is overpowered. I think it has just way, way, way too much basic attack damage. It's the best basic attacker in the game by far. It is obscene it is obscene what this pokemon can do it does like six seven thousand damage in a split second just with basic attacks it's ridiculous blaze kick is a totally fair and balanced move that just lets him move wherever it wants on the map has even more mobility with the flame charge it's ridiculous what this character is able to get away with just don't make the right of plays and you can get yeah, cinderace is dumb i hate i hate cinderace but it's my most played character and i also do love playing it I think it is the most over, one of the most overpowered characters in the game. Um, and I'm going to stick to that take. Some pro players will tell you it's down here and some pro players are dumb. <laughs> All right, moving on to Cramorant. I think it's a perfectly fine B tier Pokemon, borderline A. Uh, the problem with Cramorant is the same thing it's always been. It 
just struggles a little bit with mobility, but it, it's United Move in a place where you can kind of mitigate that. And Dive Slash Air Slash is in a place where you can kind of mitigate it. Hurricane Surf, people consider bad. I don't. I think it's really solid. Still a really fun build. I, I don't think Kermit has a bad build. I just think there are better uh, mages in the game. So we'll give it a nice solid B tier. Pikachu's A, one of the best lane attackers in the entire game, one of the best early games in the entire game. Wild Charge, Volt, or no, um, Volt Tackle, Electro Ball is fantastic. Crowd Control, fantastic, like uh, last hitting. Thunder Thunderbolt is great, just damage over time, good stuns. Like it has everything you want to get and it gets its unite move like every four seconds. So yeah, Pikachu's great. Borderline S tier Pokemon for me, but we're going to go ahead and keep it in A for now. Ninetales, I'm going to put it. Mm, it's honestly i'm gonna i'm gonna still keep it b just because of all the freezes and how um annoying that can be the problem with Nitos is i just think there are you know other pokemon that are just better land attackers at the end of the day it's really strong really good like you can still carry a game with Nitos. it's a little bit rough to um i, it, I guess let me rephrase that it's you can still do a boatload of damage with Nitos. the problem is it's a little bit hard to carry because you can't you have no last hitting you have no real secure your night move is okay for it but do you want to use your unite move for adrenaline yes you should most of the time but you don't often have it at first dread and then yeah it's just a little it's weird like you, you can do so much damage with this pokemon but it's a little bit hard to solo carry with it so i'm gonna keep it in b because i think they're just pokemon that can carry a little bit harder sylveon mm, i'm gonna put it in c tier problem with sylveon is hyper voice is just so easily countered by mobility and just look at how much mobility everything up here has compared to sylveon like hyper voice is incredibly strong but it's just the most easy to avoid move in the game mystical fire is pretty bad the rest of his kit's okay like solid i just think you know mystical fire is bad and hyper voice is easy to avoid so we put it in c tier Decidueye. i'm putting it a because spirit shackle is good and absol's not as good as it used to be it, it was a borderline unplayable in absolute meta, but where things are at right now, currently, I think the situation is pretty fine. I think the, uh, so they air quote nerfs uh, Spirit Shackle. You only get two charges instead of three, but I believe that is technically a shadow buff because the recharge is faster. You know what would be crazy? Maybe if they, I don't know, put it in the fucking patch notes, that would have been wild so we actually know what's going on. But it, word going around well, from what I've heard is it's actually a, shadow buffs like technically a buff to um spirit shackles so that's cool i love the situation one of my favorite characters to play so i'm gonna put it in the a tier it's just you have to be very 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 careful when playing decision because literally everything in the game can delete you but it, if you're if you're hitting your shots if you're you know positioning yourself right there are a few pokemon that can carry a game quite like the situation the Raladon, i'm gonna put it b just because it does have good range it does have decent secure it's just there are a lot of pokemon that have better secure and there are a lot of pokemon that just have range attacks that are better so putting it in b tier it's not bad it's just better pokemon that are better let's be on it's borderline d tier for me but i don't think it necessarily needs a buff i just think it's got a pretty underwhelming kit <laughs> um side shock is really really strong that's kind of it <laughs> this pokemon is side shock the pokemon side beams mid feature sites mid sword powers bad um it's that move is only okay i just think it's pretty underwhelming so yeah we'll put it in c tier all right del fox i'm leaving it in a it lost its ability to crit unfortunately but it gets its cooldowns you know ridiculously fast it gets its united move ridiculously fast i think it's still really strong um flame charge is better now fire spin got nerfed got reined in a little bit so that's good i never thought it was overpowered but so many people did anyway i really like del fox i think it's a good pokemon leaving it in a tier and then last and certainly not least we have the reason we're all here 30 something minutes later we have glaceon where are we gonna put the new ice guy i'm putting it in a tier cautiously um i don't think this pokemon is far from broken in my opinion but some people are complaining about ice shard i don't possibly know how you can complain about ice shard it's cool what it does gives you a little bit of a move buff it makes your attacks do a little bit of extra like pop damage like any basic attacks you hit do like a little bit of like it just does like a little bit more it just makes your basic it's a basic attack build like it's not broken uh icicle spear is the far superior build in my mind icy wins okay freeze dry is terrible 
Um, it's Unite move is good. The problem with the Unite move, though, is it's really hard to fight in sometimes, and you are very, very vulnerable. Like, this Pokemon is unbelievably squishy, but you can't really afford to run. Like, I've been running, I've tried it with Buddy Barrier a lot, I've tried it with Focus Band a lot. The problem is you can't run both of them on this build because you need damage, you need a muscle band, you need either a scope lens or a choice specs. I prefer, I'm not really sure what I prefer on it, but it, the problem is it's just you're so squishy in your Unite move and it's such a weird like radius, it's like such an awkward shape. Like maybe if they just made it a circle or made it like a square, just like an, an actual shape instead of like this diamond that like you need to like chase people in, but you can't because if you leave like the certain area, like it's, it's weird. It's really, 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 really strong and really, really, really fun to play it's not broken by any means i think it's in a good place i think it's a fine good solid release it feels like a special attack adc like a special attack focus cinderace is really cool i think that's sort of what it feels like but like maybe like a weirder different version of venusaur kind of um weirder different sort of version of delphox like it's a, it's a weird pokemon it's really fun really strong but it's it's not broken in my opinion so we leave it in the a tier hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think of my tier list and let me know where I ranked your po favorite Pokemon. Is it too high, too low? Let's have some fun talking about the, you know, Pokemon Unite in the old comment section. But please be nice. Don't get mean with each other. That's going to do it for me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Catch you all in the next one. Have a good day. Peace.